All right, good morning. Welcome back to Twin Stick Garage. Exciting day for old Twin Sticks because I'm going to actually take this snowman rig to its first ever truck show. Some vintage big rigs help celebrate a company's 100th birthday. Trucking company Kenworth is bringing some unique trucks to different dealerships around North America. There are trucks from all different decades, including one from 1926 and this one from Smokey and the Bandit. So this truck's been spoiled the last few years in that it gets to live inside a heated shop. So it might be a little angry with me. It's a little fresh this morning. Oh yeah, all the how dare you. So we'll let old, old Smokey here warm up a touch. Do a walk around, make sure everything's tip top, and then we'll hit the road. So if you're new here, this is my, well, this is 79 Kenworth that I built up in the spirit of the 1974 Kenworth used in the Smokey and the Bandit movie from the late 70s with Burt Reynolds, and Sally Field, and Jerry Reed. And I've been working on this truck for, I don't know, two, three years now, but it's really turned out nice. I actually just got it finished, just in time for this show. So I'm really excited to take this out there and meet a, a bunch of cool people and a bunch of folks that are interested in old trucks. Actually, I got invited to this show. It's at the local Kenworth dealership. And this is, uh, this being 2023, is the 100th anniversary of Kenworth. So when they found out I was building a Smokey the Bandit replica, they were like, you gotta bring that thing down. It'd be such a nice addition to the show. And so I'm really excited to go and see how it's gonna go today. All right, lights are looking good. Trailer's looking extra good. I'll let it finish building air and throw in some heat in the liners and then uh, we'll hit the road. Oh, I'm excited.
week driving truck. So here we are, parked in front of Kenworth. How sweet is that? So they got the 100th anniversary, like I was saying. So they got one of the new trucks. We'll check that out. And there's Ken Dubuque down there. He's got a beautiful long hood Kenworth with a nice trailer with a Thermal King on it. And yeah, this is gonna be where they're gonna line up all the trucks all day long. So I'm here a little early. God, that looks good. So what I'll do is I got to do a little bit of uh, cleaning on the inside and a little bit of tire spray and the, and the fancy stuff, but man, I'm happy. It's good. It's here. Made it in one piece and man, she looks sharp. Hey, there's Gord. <laughs> so Gord, he was at uh, the Lesco show the last couple years. Well, he always goes to the Lesco shows and he's got an old 1923 Kenworth in there. Sweet old cab over. Oh man. I love this stuff. Oh, I mean, look at this beauty. Long hood, big bunk, gorgeous thermal king. Oh, that looks sharp, sir. Yeah, Gord's minty aerodyne. A100E. Oh, I like the thermal king emblem on there. Focus, come on. 
Isn't that cool? Oh, and now I can see what all the gauges are supposed to look like. See the ones I'm, that I'm missing. <laughs> End of view. Oh, that's gorgeous. <laughs> Stacks are different height. I love it. Any guy that would paint his truck like this would go to a minister's funeral dressed in feathers. Shit! Fastest chicken in the south. There's Gord's 1923 Kenworth. Just warming it up. See, he hauls it inside the trailer there. Hey, Gord. <laughs> And here's Bernie's beautiful 25th anniversary Kenworth. Now it was the 25th anniversary of a Canadian Kenworth. Oh, look at this old beauty. It's just Kenworths everywhere. So yeah, um, Gord's is a 26 Kenworth, not a 23. And he's got uh, some old fuel in there. That's why she's, she's struggling a little. Still cool as hell though. <laughs> Looks good, Steven. So if you know Stephen Large, he was the one that sold me the cab over. <laughs> oh, today is a good day. He actually pulled it to my yard with this uh, with this truck. Been watching. Yep. Oh yeah. So yeah, that's Stephen's wife's uh, truck there. And she's driving this gravel truck, so Steven's bringing a whole bunch of iron. I gotta go say hi to Angela and Steven. <laughs> oh, there's another nice Kenny coming in. A little single drive. Yeah, Steven's got a nice collection. As I mentioned, he, he, he had that cab over, he had the Duke, and I talked him out of it. Oh, that's gonna be fun. I wish the sun would come out though. It's a little fresh out here. Oh, well, that was nice of them. Kenworth was handing out stuff to the driver, so I got a shirt and a hat and some keychains. Oh, sweet. Oh, there's a nice one. You know, someday if I retire and buy a new truck, it'll be one like that. Hey, where's the NW trailer? <laughs> rig it's actually got a twin stick in it and i hope david doesn't mind but i just want to show these pedals because they're so unique they're just flat and he says it's very uncomfortable to drive it but that's uh that's how the old timers used to do it back in the day it's got a heck of a wheelbase love the duck this old rat rod needle nose kenworth Oh, I like the backup train bell. OJ pipeline. It's nice. That looks really nice. Oh, no, I say it hasn't been out. I haven't seen a pipeline in a while. I kind of like the faded yellow. It's almost like an old school yeah. color. Yeah. Redneck princess. I gotta go take a closer look at that. Look at that grill. Oh, big old greasy Detroit. No, oh, we got an auxiliary box too. Cool. Fellow twin sticker. <laughs> oh, another twin sticker. Neat old Kenworth. Crooked Kenworth emblem there on the hood. Check this thing out. Double bunks. That's pretty unique, isn't it? That's definitely not factory. He must have added that, huh? And he did the, the big opening. I was laughing, saying if it was the crawl through, it'd be a hell of a time trying to crawl through, run into the back. <laughs> I see inside. 
No, they're, no they're, oh, it's inside locked. isn't finished. Oh, it's not finished yet. Oh, okay. No, that's why it's locked up. You're still working on it. Yeah. The upholstery guy. I don't think he died. <laughs> you can't get a hold of him. That's taking his time. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't work for us anymore. No, it took me. I was just showing him the pictures of this thing as we were building it, eh? Oh, neat. So what are they, two, a couple of uh, Kenworth 36s? Yeah. This one here, this one here is probably, it's the old, old style. Okay. It had, it had the uh, ripple backs. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we didn't use the ripple back. Yeah. I'm going to put the windows in it. Yeah, the owner was saying he extended it three feet and it's a 280 wheelbase. Did a beautiful job of it. I love the paint. Very unique. Look at that extended hood. Canadian intakes. Beautiful. And then Boy Chalk's got one of their one of their beauties here as well. Just on display inside. Look at that thing. Absolute classic. It's a short hood. So it's the same as Snowman. It's just got the, the bigger bunk. Beautiful. So I gotta go check out this 100th anniversary Kenworth trailer. Isn't this neat? So where do we start? 1910, okay. Ah. Harvey Kent and Edward K. Worthington came together. Ken Worth. Ah. Boy, I love the history. It's a shame that all these old trucks with the wooden wheels are gone. I mean, I guess Gord's still got a 1926 one sitting out there, but I think there's probably only a few left. There's probably only two or three handful left in the world. Oh, that's interesting. Look at that. You got the, uh, the double bunk. Oh, and the crooked Kenworth hood pull. I want one of those. This is really cool. And then moving into the, the 80s, the T600 became pretty popular. 900 Bs. Oh, that's what they're gonna look like in the next 100 years? Uh, I don't know. Oh, the sun's trying to come out. Finally starting to warm up. Big old 900 long with the Aerodyne bunk, hockey stick pipes, 900A round headlights. That's pretty sweet. Oh, it is a 900A. Oh, long hood or no hood. Not a humble. Hot Rod 81. It's an Ebert bumper. Yeah, I was wondering where all the cab overs are. Well, time one showed up. K100E, mid 80s. Probably still a couple years away from bringing the Duke to one of these shows, but I'll get it there eventually. Yeah, that's that puppy. The two aerodynes still are pretty. Are really I love the, uh, the Steelies. Looks like you had them powder coated blue. As you can see, that's a bigger cab than my Duke. 
So that's the full queen bed, whereas the duke kind of cuts off right at the end of the uh, steps, where that's the, the larger, the big cabs they call them. Beautiful. Now check this needle nose out. I love it because it's just a day cab, but he's got huge eight inch pipes. Flash cuts. Oh, this is gorgeous. Everything's polished out. I love the paint. And this is similar to what Blake and I are going to do at the back with the bumper. Except we're going to have, we're going to laser cut or water cut the Twinstick Garage logo into the back on the cab over. Yeah, beautiful. Even tinted windows. I gotta see the inside of this thing. It's pretty sweet. It's oh, the button tough, but yeah. Oh, even the stitching. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That is lovely. Even the uh, sun visor, and then the middle of the. Oh yeah. The middle of the radio thing is. That's pretty nice, actually. Yeah, that's really well done. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, I thought you were joking about the chandelier. Crystal chandelier. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. So the Crystal Palace. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, Tim was just telling me the story. So, the double bunks, this is a copy of a Tyrone Malone's truck. The custom built extravaganza of chrome, steel, and fiberglass, designed and built by a self described gypsy trucker who calls himself Tyrone Malone. $150,000 super boss appears at shows and races all over the world. Malone dazzles crowds with smoking burnouts and 180 degree spin outs that came into his act by accident. One day I was at Kansas City Raceway and I, my brakes uh, failed me and I'm coming to the end of the track and I'm still doing about 40, 50 miles an hour and I don't know what to do so I just turned it around. You know, I took a chance on turning it over. I didn't want to go in the ditch. Well, it didn't turn over. But it almost did. And from that, I start practicing on my 180s. And I think that's what the crowd really likes, because we do fantastic, as I call them, the Bandag burnouts, you know? And uh, he used to have that in Edmonton. They used to bring it to Klondike days, and they'd rev the engine up and hit the jakes and all that. And it's the, that was the same one that I looked at in the trailer. I'll go show a picture of that again. But Tyrone Malone's, the tanks were just a standard tank, and it didn't look right, because they weren't long enough. So he actually had these tanks custom cut and then welded and they re-welded it right underneath the tank band and so they were 150s and they're probably like 180s now but that looks way better yeah so there's the tyrone malone truck that i was talking yeah. about and as you can see the tank's a little shorter there i need a second bunk but that's what the tim's copy in that old truck because he kind of knew that one growing up and always thought it was cool so that's why he wanted to build a Kind of a replica tip of the hat. That's awesome. Yeah, 74. Chilkuth, Ohio plant opens in 74. 16,000 Kennys per year. And then that was the year moving on. The Sonny Pruitt show started out. That's awesome. Take we rolling, moving on. It takes a special breed to be a truck driving man. 73 with the gold and black hood pulls they weren't gold or not gold and black they were red and black or come on mark they, they were gold and uh gold and red seven and a half tons of custom forged steel 150 miles without refueling and i think they did the gold and black one in the smoking the bandit movie just to match the trans amp the Aerodyne came out in 76. That was a good year. That's when I was hatched. Seven feet of headroom. Yeah, the Aerodyne has always been a pretty cool, pretty cool bunk. And of course, you know all about that. You're a fan of the channel. 79, BJ and the Bear. Yeah, the 70s were the, not just definitely the high point of featuring Kenworth trucks. 70s were the high point of trucking as far as I'm concerned. You know, here's a late addition to the show. Better late than never, but look at this beautiful Kenworth. Long hood, grill bars for days, and I love the accents that he did. So he painted the extruded steel 
or not extruded steel, but the, the punch steel grill. And look, he also painted these steps. Now, a lot of guys, I've got long legs, but a lot of guys that are a little shorter than me, they sometimes struggle to get up to this first step. So he actually put a drop down step on there and then painted those. Well, that's probably, I don't know if it's paint or powder coat. It's just lovely. Look at those nice brackets to hold the pipes. And again, the accents are really what makes a show truck. Like accenting, you probably notice the bands right away and that's pretty common to have them the same color as the paint. But then to powder coat the cap, I mean, the bumper or the fender mounts, just really nice. Beautiful truck. Big 60 inch bunk. Drop bumper, Canadian air cans, and he had them chromed. Wow, that's a beauty. Well, I had to start it up. At least you got to hear it. Ernie was telling me he drove this thing from Edmonton, Alberta, all the way down to, to the Reno, Nevada ATHS truck show this year. That's awesome. So girl didn't have any issues. He said he lost uh, he lost low range. The high low range switch buggered up on him, so he was stuck in high range for the last part of the trip. He said it wasn't a big deal, but uh, backing up was a little tricky. It's cool. This old iron can still go down the road all the way to Reno without issue. Well, that was a good day meet some new friends and see some old ones snowman truck with with some fans yeah I'm glad I came out thanks for the invite Ken you're one cool dude alright we're out of here Smokey and the Bandit. Customers and employees also brought their own trucks.
they're they're passionate people. Like when they heard this was happening, they were happy to be a part of it, and it's a lot of work to keep these up and a lot of work to bring them down, and they were more than happy to do it. Pretty well, everything here is very very rare. You know, there's uh, everything here. It's like people bought these trucks, restored them, just keep them going. They're classics. Kenworth Edmondson hopes to have another truck show next year.